Um, okay, so guys that are not working today are Nick, Richie James, and Kadarius. Everybody else is going to work, and we'll update you after practice on how they do. Sorry, one more time. Yep, yep, sure. Bolton, Bolton yeah. James, Richie James, and Kadarius. Not practicing. Not practicing. How you doing, everybody? Uh, who's your return guy? Who's my return <laughs> guy? I got a lot of guys, obviously. I mean, I got a lot of options. You know, Tony, obviously, uh, Sky, uh, Watson. Um, you know, Rice has done it. You know, when we put him in there, questionable. You know, I mean, but all those guys can do it. You know, I feel, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll see how it works out. You think it'll be a committee? Uh, I do. I do. Uh, you know, we'll start off with somebody, and if he's, he's fine and he's not getting a lot of reps, I can stay with him again. And, you know, we do have options, guys that have done it in games, and that's what, that's where we'll go with it. Yeah. Take us through that uh, fourth down decision in the first quarter. Uh, it would have been a long field goal, but you might right. could have tried it. What, what, uh, what happened there? Well, early, you know, in pregame, like I, I talked about before, we always go through his warm-up. Yeah. And we felt like his yard line on that side was 35-yard line. So we were two and a half yards outside of that spot, and it was early in the game. And uh, sometimes you gotta, you gotta, you gotta weigh it out and say, you know, do we, do we, do we kick it, miss it, and give him field position? Our defense was playing great. We decided to play field position in that case, and, we, and Tommy came through, put it on the one. Uh, now they got to go 99 yards. So I mean, it was, you know, I've, I'm glad Tommy came through. You know, didn't hit a touchback right there. It would have been a bigger issue, but. Um, you know, I just think you have to make that. You have to protect Bucker too. I mean, we did, we come to a decision of where we're going to go, and I don't want to try to go out of out of that zone early in the game. Later in the game, we can kind of stretch it a little bit when we need it. You know, it's all about percentages of what we think he can make and not make. Coach, it looked like Richie lost that ball in the sun that hit him. Yeah. When when someone, I mean, what's the coaching on that? Do you tell him to get <laughs> out of there, or, or what do you do when? I mean, I, I thought, I think he thought he was, you know, and, I, and I'm speaking for him, but I, I think he thought he was in the perfect position to catch it. I mean, because you watch the tape and you can really, you know, on the TV copy, you can see his eyes, like he was looking at the ball. It wasn't like he was looking at the coverage or anything. He thought he was looking at the ball, and then all of a sudden it, it kind of moved late on him, and obviously, you know, it didn't work out like we wanted to. But that, you know, he he was a he's a good catcher, you know, and, and that was that was an odd ball. That was a, a, a thing that, you know, um, I don't think is going to be a problem. Going forward, but you know, we just need him to get better. Do you guys ever intentionally? I know the shadows get weird here later in the year. Do you guys ever intentionally try to? Keep oh yeah, forward yeah, yeah. We'll we'll look at that. The sun makes a difference, you know. And and we'll we'll you know it, depending on if we win the toss, lose the toss, we it depends on where we kick direction, so we know we're going to get in the second half and all those things. All that stuff comes into play. Coach, all the time. Uh, I don't know if you saw the Patriots. No, I did. I did. So, have you got any ideas like that? Uh, I mean, it's a, it was they executed it well. Now, th this is something. It wasn't the first time it's been done. It's been done before. I've I've seen the Patriots. I think it was the Patriots do this same thing. They just didn't get the block, you know. And and I think it might have been Pittsburgh too. But in over my career, I've seen it before. Uh, but this is the first time somebody got a block on it. So now it's a, you know, it's a big deal. Uh, so now we have to talk to our field goal team and say, what, what do you do You know, if you get that and how do you handle it? And without getting into that, we, we, we covered it. And um, you know, I think more people are going to try it because it's a copycat league. You know, so we're going to see it again, yeah. for sure. I was about to say, is that something just in Belichick's crazy mind? Or is that kind of yeah, I think he's, he's done it before. I mean, it's been something that they thought that they could get something on against somebody, but they, didn't, they weren't successful with the block. You know, but this, this guy ran it perfect, timed it up perfect. Got the block, and it was it was a nice play. It was impressive. Yeah, how's it the timing of play like that? I mean, just from like you have to, yeah. You, there's a lot of things to go. He, he was initially he's looking at the holder to, to get his to get his start. You know, you have to practice the heck out of it. You know, you watch watch the holder's uh, routine, and then you, and it's, as you start running, now you go to the ball, and when the ball snaps, boom, you you just go. If the ball doesn't snap, obviously you gotta you gotta bail. So it's not an all or nothing thing. You're still still looking at the ball at the last second, but you're on a run and start. Now now the momentum of your body, I mean, it's hard for that wing to get that thing stopped because he's he's going so fast. And that's what happened. He ran through the arm of the wing and got the block. Which Good play. Which player roster might be best at that? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Ben, what, what goes into determining who, uh, how do you guys determine who uh, is a return guy for you? Do they have to have college experience? 
or uh, yeah, yeah I mean NFL experience preferably yeah you know I mean obviously um, that I mean there's there's a big difference between college and NFL you know I mean <laughs> catching catching punts and kickoffs and the guys coming down the field and uh, the type of ball, the high hang times, the different stuff that you're going to get. <clears throat> so, I mean, I'd rather have a guy that's done it in the game so he has that experience. And, you know, we have guys that have done it and done it at a high level. So, you know, we'll be okay. We just we just need 17 to get back healthy again. Did we see how often you work on the, the kickoffs and the punt, just, just catching the ball? How different is that? Than it's way different. It's way different catching it, uh, catching a real punt and catching a punt off a of jug is totally different. Like the jugs will give you the perfect turnover every time. A, a punt, you know, you're going to get the crazy punt, you know, the crazy uh, turn rotation of the football and the wind affects it differently. So it's it's harder to catch a real punt. So that's why we try and every time we have a chance to catch Tommy's punts, we want to do that as much as we can. But you, you can't have Tommy. He can't. He's not a human jugs machine. So you can only get so many. I'm guessing that adds to the degree of difficulty. If the pump returner, I said this before. I mean, you got quarterback and you got pump returner. In my opinion, I mean, it's a it's a hard job, you know. And it's um, there's a lot we ask a lot of those guys, and it's it's a tough position to play. Do you guys have a like a punt count on Tommy during the week like that? I mean, because you, you want him to catch some of them. What's your number? How much you make him kick in a week? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Tommy likes to punt a lot, but the the, the problem is Tommy's on the other field, and, and offense and defense are going. They got their drills that they're doing, so. The key is to find time when you know they're not, the receivers aren't doing something, or the you know the, the returners aren't doing something. That Tommy, they can overcatch Tommy's punt. Anything so far that surprised you on the, the fair catching on the kicks this week? I, this there hasn't been that many. I mean, there's only we, we you know I got Frazier gives me stats all the time. There's been 33 kicks that haven't been in the end zone, and there's only been three fair catches. You know the balls that, are, that have been hit from the goal line to the 15. Last one, Nate. That, that was my question. Yeah, that, that was it. Thanks, right, thanks. Thank you. See you later. Everybody. All right. Lucky we got another nice day out there. Somebody said the rain's coming, so it looks like we might stay dry today, which is good. I don't have much to say. We're on to the next game and looking forward to it. So with that, I'll open it up. Steve, um, a couple weeks uh, leading up to the Detroit game, you had kind of said you, you weren't sure maybe where this defense was, what you were good at, what you weren't good at. Yeah. I'm guessing you're probably ahead of where you thought you might be at this point. I mean, is that is that at, fair to say? And also, if so, what are maybe some of the reasons for that? Yeah, I I, I don't know. You know, my expectations are never we're going to be we're going to be here after two games will be there. It's always the hope that we're going to get better as we go. I'm, you know, I'll tell you what I told them on Tuesday that I'm, I'm proud of the way they played, and um, we we got to just keep stacking those kind of games. You know, it's we kind of put it to bed real quickly on Tuesday, and we're on to Chicago now. We've done some good things. That doesn't mean that's going to continue because it's a different challenge this week than it was last week. There's a whole different challenge. A lot of unknowns here, in, in our opinion. So. Hopefully the the um, the play in certain situational areas. Hopefully that remains the same because I think that's always really important. Third down, red zone. We probably haven't had as many turnovers as we would like to get. Um, we still can probably shore up some tackling uh, in areas here. And and really generally overall in the run defense, it's not quite where we wanted. I'm talking really mostly just first and second down. Uh, so those are some of the things that we looked at and talked about on Tuesday and as we got ready for this game. We say some unknowns. What, what yeah, you well, I, you know, so you take, um, listen, when you're at the beginning of the season and there's not a uh, great high volume of number of plays to look at with this personnel group that we're facing, you know, you go off of two games, you know, that's one set eyes on what they've been doing. Then you go back to last year, which they did really, are they going to, we're just not really sure which way they're going to go. We know they're talking, you know, a couple of different things. So. We, more than anything, we've kind of turned it back to us and just kind of execute what we do and let's see what their plan is going into the game. That's what I mean by. I understand you guys are great with, with next man up. When you watch the film and Chris is back, how do you quantify his impact on everything? Yeah, well, listen, I mean, listen, Chris is an, an all pro player, so I think he influences what offensive lines do. Um, if they're going to, if anybody on either side of the ball in any type of football is going to concentrate, 
um, assets to one guy, it should open things for other guys. I think that's hap happened a little bit in this last game for us, and hopefully that continues to happen because guys like George and Mike and Felix, we need that. Derek had, I thought Derek had a really good game. Knocking that ball, ball down was really important. So having a, having a player like Chris in there certainly opens up some things for the other guys. Did it surprise you about what he was able to do? And in terms of you know coming yeah. <laughs> coming off the street and uh, <laughs> I, you know I not right in some regards no uh, I think we we talked about this before he got back he's always kept himself in great shape so I really didn't worry about that part we did fear the injury thing just because your body's not trained for what you have to go through on a Sunday so that was always a fear but I thought. Joe and Terry kind of managed it pretty good. The numbers came out about where we thought they should. I think he was in the 30s somewhere with numbers of plays. Um, and we'll just see as we go forward. But we like having him out there. We talked a little bit in training camp about you using Leo more in yeah. some pass rushing scenarios. Yeah. Um, obviously, that's happening. Yeah. How has he matured in that? And you know, he talked to us about talk, working with Joe and Terry a lot as well. How have you seen yeah. that? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I every guy on the team probably not just the team will tell you that Leo might be the strongest pound for pound guy we got on the team he's strong I mean real strong I, you can see what he does to tight ends and now he's even kind of brought that to tackles he's always had a little bit of a pass rush instincts he did a little bit of it at Wisconsin kind of from off the ball not on the ball um, but where there's a lot of places that we feel like we can use Leo and we want to try to do that as much as we can a little bit of it's dictated by what the offense is putting out there. Um, but I'm really happy with what Leo's done. And we, we're going to keep trying to use him as much as we can. And all those linebackers have done a nice job. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say all those linebackers have, have kind of been shuffled in. Yeah. So Nick and Willie are still at the top of snaps, but yeah. it's, it's kind of a crapshoot. Well, we felt like, you know, Brendan, myself, all the coaches felt like we had some, we acquired some players there at linebacker, Drew in particular, right? And then. Jack's been here, and young Cam Jones who's doing really well on special teams. Plus, Willie, we knew what we had. Leo, so that you looked at that room and said, there's some guys there that can make plays and help us. So let's find ways to get them on the field. I mean, you guys have seen Leo out there with Drew and Nick, you know, so there's three linebackers there, and then it's been Willie and uh, Leo and Nick. So we'll kind of mix and match it. We'll do it as we go through the season and find spots that we can use those guys that will help us effectively. It seems, it seems to be some uncertainty with Nick this week. How ready is yeah. Drew if, if need be? Well, I, th I think Drew's, we, I mean, we're very fortunate we got Drew. He's played linebacker before. He's been in the system now a little bit, got a couple games under his belt. You guys would have noticed in both games that we played, Drew, there was certain series in the first half there where Drew would go out and be the mic. We gave Nick some reps off, and we, we wanted to do that early because it was early in the season, number one, and the second game it was because we were in Florida, and we knew that, you know, it could get long, and we all wanted to be fresh at the end of the game. And I think that will help Drew if he has to step in there and take over for Nick in this one. Steve, the red zone in particular is something you emphasize a lot. Yeah. Had a really good day Sunday. Um, yeah. What do you think just of the performance overall? And then after that, I want to ask you about What I think mostly is I hope it continues. <laughs> but I was proud of the way those guys, you know, the way we stood up in the red zone in some adverse situations, you know, it got. But they, the guys, you know, down there more than any other place in the field, I think that the group has to play like that. It can't, it's not just about an individual making plays here or there. I mean, you've got to be on all cylinders down in the red zone because things happen fast. Andy talks about that all the time. And I thought the way we function down there, we've done a couple of different things, not a lot different, uh, maybe just enough tweaks in there to help us. Uh, and if, you know, Last year, if I remember correctly, one of the things that was challenging down there when we went back and studied it was, was controlling the quarterback with beating us with his feet or getting out of the pocket and making a play. So if we can keep doing that, and this week's going to be a pretty good challenge with the quarterback we got down there. So. Yeah, we had, we, that was on the one, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, we expected them to, and that's what really what they were trying to do. It's just that I think the quarterback, I think Trevor just saw that we had packed everybody in there. And we had worked on that, you know, that was one of those plays where after the game as a coach you go, okay, we did work on the right thing uh, during the week. That doesn't always happen. And, to the, and, and that's a kind of an execution thing. There was a lot more going on on that play than just Legereus and Nick. Some of the guys that were in tune to him there, it was really important that they did what they did to get them to pull the ball. So that one was a... That was well practiced and well coached by the coaches to get that done. Along those lines, I think there were three times that they ended up throwing the ball out of the end zone. 
maybe maybe four, three or four. Yeah. But those all, I assume, you, you think reflected the coverage, right? There was there was no place to put the ball. Yeah, I thought our coverage on those particular downs was really good. I mean, they got where well, they got Jay Reed one on a penalty, right? I thought yeah, that coverage yeah. was pretty tight, and he couldn't go anywhere else but there. And then LJ had one that. But the, the coverage was pretty much on point. That I'm not going to say where they, where they were, but there was a couple of holes that he could have found. Um, and, you know, because maybe we made him move around a little bit, Chris had got, I know Chris made a move a couple of times, and that helps because it gets the quarterback off his progression. So all of it kind of, it still went back to this. It kind of all pieced together. And at some point, it's the angle that you've got there, though, on those, those balls they tried to do. I mean, yeah. you're, you're gritting your teeth as the throw goes up, but, but you like where the guys were. Yeah, we, you want to listen. When the, when the receiver gets to the back end line, A, you want to try to push him out so he's ineligible. And B, if they're going to complete a pass, you want it to be over the top of you back there because then a couple things can happen, right? He, they can step on the end line, catch it, not catch it, you know. And when the ball's thrown along the goal line, they're going to be thrown low, so we're defending balls low. So all those things we go through. Steve. Okay, well, you need three more. you got to get out of here. Okay. Steve, PJ, and Nick. Steve, uh, Nick was – franchise showed him mic'd up in the game. Uh, and he was telling oh, they did? pre-snap, yeah. uh, hey, find someone to beat against, line up, you know, find somebody to beat against. Beat, you know, yeah. Is that some, something that you're allowing him to do? Just oh, pick yeah. Just pick a spot? Yeah, with both those guys. I mean, there are times when we just tell Chris, especially in a passing situation, line up where you want to line up on this uh, down. And he does that. What's great is the other guys around him. Everybody right now is flexible enough that they can go to different spots. And listen, Nick tells a lot of people where to go and what to do. That's what that, I mean. But I mean that in a good way. I don't, I don't mean he's telling them what to do. You know what I'm saying. Uh, he helps them. Uh, but he's, he's, um, he's incredible in that regard. He can... He can do a lot of things at one time. He's a multitasker, and that's that's good as a Mike linebacker. And then looking at Fields, um, I know you, you probably heard some of his comments where he says he wants to guy venture out of the pocket this week. How, how yeah. much do you take from words when you see the film? Well, listen, uh, if you go watch film from last year, when he does that, it's scary. Um, you know, we saw something on one of the PFF slides that he's had as many of those take off, get to 20 miles an hour as Tyreek Hill. And we all know what Tyreek can do. Um, so it's, it's a concern. It would have been whether he said that or not. Um, because I think if you let him do that, he can wreck the game. Yeah. Steve, you know for man-to-man -man coverage, obviously in the secondary, but how much do you feel like you guys have worked on zone and, and sort of match zone coverage? And just yeah. what do you see that has worked from a coaching standpoint to the guys? Yeah, all our zone coverage is our match zone. We're not a spot drop, you know zone eyes on the quarterback team everything we some of what you may think is man is not man uh, right. just ends up looking that way that. yeah because we match it but we believe in that philosophically that's the, what we believe in zone coverage wise and when our guys it goes back to the you know you can go back to the red zone and because some of that's matched too um, and when you execute that when guys are playing off of each other you know, it's not pure man where you're just taking your guy you might end up with that guy you might end up with that guy when you can do that and you're in sync that's when it starts to flow a little bit together. So the guys are getting used to each other in that way. Is that it? Okay. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. All right. Go ahead. Fire away. Uh, going back home? Not home. What? Going back to playing against Chicago. Yeah. What, what are the thoughts there? Um, you know, for me, it's, it's, I, it's not about that. It really isn't. People say that, but <clears throat> this is a year and a half away from my, my time there, but being back home here, um, with these guys and we, we know what we have ahead of us being able to prepare for any NFL game in particular, like you just said, you know, it's, uh, I know people in the building, I know players, um, a lot of support staff and, you know, that's, what's real. But at the same point in time, you really do try to, uh, get to a point where you want to make sure that it's not about any of that. And, and I mean that, you know, this is about um, our team versus them and me being a Kansas City Chief and going out and being better from last week, you know, regardless of who we're playing. We got to improve offensively, be better there. And that's really been the focus since uh, that game ended last weekend. What's that? Just to focus just purely on that stuff. Yeah, it is. 
It is. I mean, we, we got to probably more than anything for me uh, was more of even in the preseason last year, going back to Chicago, a lot of familiar faces. people. So I feel like I got that out of the way um, last year. And now here we are a year and a half later. And, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a different team there now. There's still some players that I know. Uh, I built some unbelievable relationships with people in the building. Uh, very appreciative of the, the relationships I built with George McCaskey, Mrs. McCaskey, Ted Phillips, Ryan Pace, et cetera. A lot of players and coaches, but that's in the past, you know. And so right now I'm so excited to be in here with these guys and practicing every day and making what you just asked me simple so that uh, we can go and do everything we can to get a win, for real. Matt, what are the coaching points with Juwan this week? Well, <clears throat> to again, we, we talked week one about some of the drops with the wideouts, uh, emphasizing it, but yet not making it such a huge deal to where it impacts them again this week. And Juwan is a, is a really, really um, good football player. He's a great person. He wants to be better. And so the only thing you can possibly do is just continue to just keep practicing. Um, with the cadence, whether it's verbal or nonverbal, which we are more nonverbal there in Jacksonville. So um, just keep working on it. And if there's times in practice where it happens, why did it happen and how do we fix it? And uh, we know that, you know, officials and other teams are looking for it. We, he knows that. We know that. So we just got to keep working at it. That's the only thing you can do. He's had an issue in his career, obviously, when he was with Jacksonville. How much have you had to work with him up to this point about those kinds of things? Yeah, Coach Heck's done a great job um, of being able to – probably emphasize and, and just remind him at times, um, you know, when you mix the cadence up verbally too, it's one thing when you go on one every play. It's another thing when you now change it up and you go on two, on three, et cetera, change your cadence up. So that's even more of a challenge. So uh, staying positive with it, I, I think for sure, and Juwan knows this, um, you know, it wasn't just him. Now those false start penalties last week affected us and put us in second and longs. But we had a lot of other penalties. We had a lot, a lot of other self-inflicted errors that we have to be better at um, in, in all phases. You know what I mean? So uh, we look at that. We always start with us as coaches, like how can we put guys in best positions possible? And then when we do, how are you executing? And part of that is pre-snap is making sure there's no you know, false start penalties, illegal formations, et cetera. Uh, we had all of that last week. We had turnovers. but. We also, as bad as it was, we won the football game because of great defense um, and situational football offensively last week. You know, end of the half, we score a touchdown. Start of the third quarter, we, we go down and have a nice drive. Uh, and then to, to end the game, we're in a four-minute mode. We have a big play, third and whatever, six, make a big play, and then finish it with the ball. So situationally, that's the good. Uh, but we gotta we gotta be better so that we can help our defense and special teams to be all three phases. When you're able to start the second half with a 30 yard run and kind of stick and the runs work, and how does that help your offense in totality? Well, it's big. Any big plays, explosives. Um, when you have a big, especially in the run game, that's an easy breather for the quarterback. It's a great momentum builder for the O line. Uh, it sets the defense because now play action's better because you're running it. So, and then when you do it the first play of the third quarter, that's momentum. You know, as far as being able to just get going and get points. And so that was that was great. But too many drives last week where we were going backwards. And we're way too detailed and we're way too, um, uh, you know, hard on ourselves in regards to making sure that coaches and players are on the same page with doing everything the right way and, and not beating ourselves. And Jacksonville, that's a great defense and a great team. But it just goes to show in the end, when you play like that, we still won the game. Now, what can we do when we don't do that? has been kind of where we're at this week. Now, when you yeah. deal with young quarterbacks, and I'm not asking about Justin Fields, mm -hmm. he said what he said yesterday about having too many things in his head, but you've been around a lot of young quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. How do you find the balance as a coordinator or a head coach to get them not to be thinking too much and, and get them to play freely? Yeah, it, there's a lot that goes into the answer to that question. I'll say just for sake of time that, um, you know, we live in this world of instant gratification right now. I'll start there. And, and so wherever we are, you see a lot of these young quarterbacks that come in that are forced to play and do well right away. You have the old stories of other quarterbacks 5, 10, 15 years ago, even some more recently that have had some time to sit and get to see. These NFL defenses are so much different than college. And so you need to you know, be able to adjust and adapt to the player um, and how they can grow. 
but you also got to be able to go through the highs and the lows together. And and so, to your point, I mean, it, it's 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 in this league. It's not just Justin in Chicago. It's it's in this league in general. How do you do that? And navigate through that and and staying together, staying positive, and going through that with Patrick as a rookie, letting him see Alex living that, and then my experiences in Chicago um, with some with Mitchell and. You know, there's a lot to it, but yeah, I think staying together, being positive, um, but also understanding that instant gratification is real. So, how do you get to that point? Uh, bouncing off the, the run game, mm -hmm. you're good. Uh, it, it seems that got a kind of more slanted towards passing for the first few games. Just is that a concerted effort, or is, is there a calculation before you go into a game? Well, every game you, you always have a, an idea of what you think you want to do, and then you get in the game and you got to adjust to what's working and what's not working. But I think uh, you know Coach Reed does such a great job since the day he started coaching of being able to really formulate how we want to win, start off that way, and then personnel-wise and w whatever it is schematically. And if the run game's going, um, then we'll go ahead and get to that. If the pass game is going, it just so happens there's been a few more passes uh, recently. Um, I think if you know Coach Reed, that probably doesn't shock you. Uh, but that's that's um, that's who we are, and we want to be able to be balanced, and we got great players to be able to do both. Well, and along those exact lines, I mean, uh, I guess Jacksonville first half, you have 26 plays, two design runs, mm -hmm. 24 passes. Sure. Um, does that, is, obviously, that's more out of balance than you usually are. Do you get in the point of the game in a situation like that where you're looking like, okay, wait a minute, there's, maybe we're not doing what we want to do here? Um, well, I ran into this, this question before because those numbers happen. And sometimes in, in these offenses with RPOs, you might have a run called and the ball gets thrown. And so there might be some more run calls that are in, in the play calling. Um, and so that's, just a, that's always one that jumps out to me when you have a, a glaring stat like that. But at the same point in time to your, to your referral, um, you want to do whatever you can do to get yards. And so if it is running you, you, and it's working, then you're going to go ahead and call more runs naturally, set up, set it up with play actions and screens. But if it's throwing too, you know, we got a, a pretty good quarterback and we want the ball in his hands as well. So I don't think any of that was intentionally to, to really answer your question. None of it was intentional. I think it's just kind of a little bit of a flow. And um, when you look back at those first, what was it, five series in the first half, four of them weren't very good. So you just try to get a rhythm. There was no rhythm for us really in that game uh, offensively. So we got to get back to getting rhythm. And whether that is running the football or whatever, we'll, we got to just figure out a way to do that as coaches and players. And I think we will. Last one, Nick. Yeah, Matt, I know you've been a little bit out on a couple Friday nights and kind of taking yeah. you as a fan. What's that been like for you? And do you kind of catch yourself sometimes being like the down distance coordinator mindset? Yeah, probably way too much. Uh, my <laughs> wife has to chill me out. Uh, I love it because it's my, my four boys. and. All these times growing up, all these little youth baseball games, football, basketball, and now it like you know it's high school. It really counts, you know. So it's been fun, and but without a doubt, I, I definitely I gotta I gotta uh, just go up in the top corner, stay away, and just drink some <laughs> some have some sunflower seeds and coffee, and just shut up and let them, let them go play and go win, you know. So that's it. But it's fun, and uh, his coaching staff has been phenomenal. They're great guys, and they do a great job. Thanks, Tom. Really good. Thank, you. Thank you. See you.
before you got benched, just what was going through your head there? Uh, a lot of highs and lows, uh, definitely. Um, but overall, I feel like uh, my performance wasn't too bad. Uh, but the penalties definitely have to be cleaned up. Did uh, did, t- did Coach Reed take you out? Did that help? Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Um, just a, a breather. Just take out, take me out for a couple plays for a breather, um, and just get back in and finish the game. You and Andy had a discussion there on the sideline. What were you guys? Is he just telling you to settle down, or, or? Yeah, just settle in. Uh, you know, clear your head, and then go back in and finish the game up. When you have a game like that, like I know you're better, but mentally, yeah. like where are you right now? I'm, I'm fine mentally. Uh, you know, I didn't let it get the best of me. I just wanted to go out there and just, you know, be my best and help my team win. So, how do you go about avoiding the false starts and the? Oh, up wrong and all that. Uh, definitely. Um, just been working on it this week to clean it up. Uh, definitely know that's a problem that needs to be fixed. Um, you know, good thing I have a great group of coaches around me uh, to help me fix it. Uh, also, you know, just um, you know, just staying poised throughout the game and not you know staying even killed, not getting letting it get the best of me. But um, definitely working to fix it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Is it a big topic of, of on the broadcast and on social media during your guys' first game? Mm-hmm. against the Lions. So the word was out, right? Yeah. Um, when you're going into the game, is that thought in your head that they might be calling some of these things? Or, or I mean, and, and during the game, what happens? Did the officials come up and try to be a little preventative with you and say, hey, listen, you got to move up a little bit? Oh, uh, yeah. Sometimes they'll come to you in the pregame and talk to you about it. Um, but throughout the game, that's not on my mind. My, on my mind is just winning and, uh, you know, doing my job, doing my part. Uh, so, but at the end of the day, I'm not here to hurt my team. So, you know, I just know I got to be better at it. Was it hard to stay even keeled? Was it hard to stay even keeled when those things went on? Or did you mention that? No, thing? no, not hard at all. Um, I always play poise, and you know, I just make sure I'm doing my job. Uh, you know, anything going on, noise around me, just you know, I just stay even keeled. Were you aware of all that discussion from the Thursday night game? Uh, I've been told about it for sure, um, but you know, definitely want to get it corrected and cleaned up. Like I said, I'm not here to hurt the team. When you're a uh, the quick step. How much work is there to be done just because you're with a new team, with the new mm-hmm. center and the new cadence and all yeah. that? I mean, how do you go about practicing that without actually doing it in a game? Uh, you know, just I started with it in OTAs and uh, mini camp, then went in a training camp with it, just getting better at it. Uh, you know, definitely not where I want to be at yet, but, uh, you know, just make sure I'm on, this, on the cadence and not early. Do you feel like there's more of a spotlight on you because you're – with the Chiefs, and, and I was <laughs> a little bit, yeah, a little bit, but uh, you know, because I, I was doing it in Jacksonville, but I'm just working to fix it now. Yeah, what do you think it says about you guys as a team that you can deal with that adversity during the game and still find a way to win the game in the end? Oh, uh, that just says our, our coaching, uh, having a great group of coaches like that, that you know, that keep us up throughout the week and let us know, like, you know, things happen, you know, but at the end of the day, we just got to go out there and get a win. So, uh, you know, everybody knows that. So, I feel like everybody plays with great poise. Coach Nagy was just telling that um, you know last week was emphasis on drops, mm-hmm. and this week is you know it's about the O line and penalties and turnovers and things yeah. like that. As an offense, just how, how do y'all emphasize that amongst the players and? Working to get better. Oh, we just know we got things to clean up and fix. Uh, we've been working on that in practice this week and making sure we're matching the, the intensity of the defense because the defense has been playing really well. So, you know, we definitely know it's different things we got to go work out, work on and fix, and uh, we're doing that. Just considering, you know, you've never played for a non-Florida team before, and mm-hmm. now you have to kind of jack in the rearview mirror. Does that ease things as the rest of the season goes on? And you say, okay, now I can just focus on this week-to-week thing because I'm sure that it, it stood out in the way. Yeah, uh, but definitely just making sure I'm staying focused week to week, um, you know, taking it one week at a time, not looking ahead, but just focusing on the, the opponent at hand, and uh, that's Chicago Bears. Couple more. Just, just to clarify what you said, doing this in Jacksonville as well, do you feel like even <coughs> this last week was pretty similar to the way that you were executing, like, like the pullback and step back and everything in Jacksonville? Oh uh, yeah. Um, if you watch back um, the past four years, I did it in Jacksonville, uh, but you know, definitely it's been uh, seen more, so definitely got to fix it. How hard is it to change to change up? Like you know, because you've been doing it for a while. So how hard is it? Uh, it's not hard at all. Um, you know, I definitely been been working on it and uh, yeah. make sure I'm getting better at it for sure. So on the, the, the past um, block success numbers were pretty high for you. I think highest in the league this week. What, mm-hmm. what do you think just about the other aspects of, of your game after this time? Uh, just being my best. Um, that's what I'm here to do. Be my best for my team and uh, make sure I'm out there just getting my job done. So, uh, you know, I don't really look at numbers or what's going on around the league, whatever. I'm just worried about myself and doing my job. So when you, like, take that's your awesome. game and, and as a whole, who, what, what first enters your mind, the penalty stuff or, or the other stuff that went wrong? Well? Uh, penalties, for sure. That's first things first. Got to know that has to be cleaned up. Uh, like coaches always say, nobody's worth the penalty. Nobody's too big to be worth the penalty. So uh, make sure I'm fixing that and uh, doing my job.
Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. I appreciate y'all.